Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Danielle with Dan Fancy Creations, and today we are going to be doing this super fun Serape tumbler made with inks. I love how this turned out, and I love that I use so many different techniques with it, such as the Serape alcohol inks, power wash spray, water slide, vinyl, all sorts of fun stuff. So I hope you guys really enjoy this tutorial. And if you are ready to see how I created this awesome tumbler that is perfect for summer, let's get started. Alright guys, so like always, we are going to start with a prepped cup that is painted white. I just use matte um, Rust-Oleum two times, which is a ultra matte flat white paint. Then you're going to need a variety of inks and a couple different sizes of paint brushes. I have a ton of Bria Reese inks. I personally like them best because I feel that the pigment is a lot brighter than others that I have used. Um, and I just have my little paint tray that I squirted some inks into. And I also have a little medicine cup of alcohol in case I need to clean my brush off. So we are basically just going to start by dipping a little bit of the ink on my paintbrush and just holding it and letting the cup turn itself around and it creates the first stripe. You guys can see that I am resting my hand on the turner arm that is next to this one. Um, it definitely helped steady my hand a bit so I wasn't getting wonky lines. And we are pretty much just going to do this all the way down the cup. And if you get a bleed like I did, um, you can go back with the different color ink and kind of repair it. The lines aren't going to be super crisp with this technique, which is something that I like. Um, all the little ink lines kind of fade into each other a little bit which gives it a really cool blended look and I will point out too that you need to make sure that your turner is pretty level <laughs> for this technique because if it's not level and your cup is going you know all kinds of crazy different directions then you're not going to get that straight line that we want for the serape pattern I mean, even mine, you can see, I think is, has a football in it and it's heavy on one side. So it's not super straight, but it is straight. So the cup turns the same every time. And when it comes to Serape, there is no right or wrong color choice, really. Serape is kind of known for having colors that don't technically go together placed next to each other. Mine was a little bit more complementary colors, I guess. They did kind of go together, um, but it just depends on your preference and style and what kind of look you're going for when you create your cup. And this is another instance where I got too much of the dark purple on my paintbrush. So it did create a little bit of a bleed into the next line. But like I'm doing here, you can just go back and kind of fix it. I would suggest just like, I don't know if you guys can see very well on the video, but I am really just kind of touching 
the tip of my paintbrush into the ink um, and the paintbrush soaks up a little bit of that ink and then I will even kind of dab that off on the side of my plastic tray just because I don't want a whole lot of inks on there. It's much easier to go back and add a little bit more ink than to take it off or try to blend it. These colors all look pretty good next to each other, but if you had a color um, that was really light next to a color that was really dark, it might be a little bit more difficult to kind of blend it and get a good color. And we are basically just going to repeat this process the entire way down the cup. And I actually really enjoy doing this method. Most of my Serape cups, or all of my Serape cups, I should say, are all glittered with double-sided tape. So it can take quite a long time. But with the inks, it's pretty easy to do. And I actually really like the look of them better than the glitter Serape. I am just definitely into the watercolored look and the blended colors. And you can always go back and add some glitter into the epoxy, which is what I did if you want a little bit of sparkle. And while we are watching, if you guys are interested in the exact colors I used, I believe it was carnation, rose, lavender, purple, peach, um, sky blue, ocean green, and turquoise. I have to get used to all the different ink names now that I'm using all Bria Reese inks when I used to use all Tim Holtz. But I like the Bria Reese because it comes with more ink and the colors are more vibrant so you don't have to use quite as much. And I don't know if you guys can tell in the video or not as well, but I do have two different size brushes that I'm using. So you can see that some of the lines are a little bit thinner than the other ones, um, which I do like. Even with my regular glitter serapes, I use different sizes, double-sided tape, just because it gives it a little bit more interest. Oh, and I believe we're also using Kelly Green <laughs> for the green. I did forget about that color. And maybe Cobalt Green as well. I'm not quite sure. I just picked a whole lot of colors that went together.
So that is pretty much it for the striping part of this tumbler. Um, I did not seal it. I never seal my inks with anything. Um, the epoxy I use has UV protection in it. So I know a lot of people seal their inks for UV protection. So I have just never seen the point of sealing inks. I have some that I've done personally that still look great that I've had for forever that I did not seal. If you want to seal, that is totally fine. Um, it's really just kind of what you're comfortable with and what you're used to doing. And I did try to get a little bit of the Serape pattern on the bottom of my cup. It did turn out pretty cute. It did take a little bit more thinking on how to do it. <laughs> but basically, once these inks were dry for a good bit, I did apply a layer of epoxy and that is what we are going to do next. All right, so now that this tumbler is completely dry, you don't want any of this ink to be wet, we are just going to apply a layer of epoxy. I did mix in a little bit of ultra fine glitter just to give it a little bit of sparkle. And I just coated the entire tumbler. And I just use finger cots for instances like this, just so I don't waste an entire glove if I'm just applying epoxy to one tumbler. I typically don't like them because I usually get epoxy all over my hands, but I try to be really careful if I'm just doing one cup. And when it comes to the bottom of your tumbler, you want to put the thinnest layer you can just because you don't want any epoxy pooling on the bottom of your cup or have any bulges of epoxy down there so our cup will sit flat. And after our epoxy is smoothed on, we are going to grab our torch and pop all the bubbles. I just move it back and forth for one rotation. That way the entire tumbler has been hit with the torch and bubbles will be popped. And that is it for this step. I used counterculture fast set for this step. So I will wait a couple hours pull it off my turner and then I can go ahead and do the Dawn Power Wash step. So now this cup is cured and I am going to apply some leopard spots on here. I thought it would be kind of cool to see what they looked like if we applied Dawn Power Wash spray over the leopard print. And I just kind of placed them in random sections all over the tumbler. I kind of wanted the leopard spots to kind of frame the image that I was going to apply. So I really just kind of placed them on the sides of the tumbler. <laughs> and 
And once I get all my leopard spots on there, it is time to have fun with the power wash. So for this step, you are going to need the Dawn power wash, spray paint, and a bucket of water. And we are just going to spray the power wash all over the tumbler. Keep in mind that wherever you spray the power wash, the spray paint will not touch. The soap pretty much acts like a barrier between the spray paint and the tumbler. It was super windy the day that I did this. You can see the spray paint kind of going everywhere. So this is what it looked like with my first round. I didn't want to get too much on there, but I definitely needed more for my um, leopard spots to be covered. And I needed a big area that was white so I could put my water slide image. So I was happy with that white spot for my water slide image, but I still wanted a little bit more power wash around the other spots on the tumbler. So I just went back and spritzed some more power wash and some more spray paint. I would say to wait for the tumbler to dry in between power washing because if you try to apply the power wash to your tumbler while it's still wet then the soap is just going to slide off and you're not going to get a good power wash pattern. I think I did the power wash about three times on this tumbler until I was happy with it. So you can definitely do the power wash as many times as you want to until you're happy with it. So now that the spray paint is dry, I am going to peel off the leopard vinyl. And I have Q-tips and acetone by me. So if there are any little spots that I need to touch up or maybe you know, make a few more spots so that more serape is showing through, we can do that in this step. So when you're pulling your vinyl off, you do want to be careful. I have seen several people that have said that, you know, they go to remove vinyl and it peels up the epoxy and we definitely don't want that to happen. Um, this video is sped up, so I am peeling this vinyl relatively slow. So just keep that in mind. So I did like the look of this leopard pattern, but I did want the leopard pattern to be a little bit more pronounced. So I did actually go back and add some opal vinyl over the leopard spots that were already there, which you will see later. And here you guys can see I am just going back. I'm really just kind of touching up the spots that may have like an overspray look where it's not super white spray paint. It's just overspray from one of the three times that I did the power wash. And if you like that look, you can definitely keep it. It's just personal preference on how you want your tumbler to look. And Q-tips are great at cleaning up little areas like this because they are pretty firm. So you just need to get the Q-tip soaked in acetone. And it does a great job at just removing that paint that you don't want in certain areas. So again, we are just going to do this around the entire cup. And you guys can see um, if I wanted a circle area a little bit more pronounced, I would just kind of twist the Q-tip 
on um, the little dot <laughs> that I wanted cleaned up a little bit. And y'all can see my little puppy running around down there. She loves it when I have my tripod out. She, I don't know why. She always tries to chew on it and eat it. It never fails. Um, even if I put it on top of a box, as soon as I get it out, she just tries to run straight for it. Maybe she wants to help. I don't know. But you guys can see how this acetone just kind of brightens some spots up so it doesn't look like it has any of the white overspray on it. And here I'm just making those little circles just by twisting the Q-tip just so it's not a huge area of just plain white paint. And if you do go back and detail it like I am, you definitely have to know when to stop. <laughs> because I could just keep going and keep going, but I just had to tell myself, no, you have to stop because then there will be no more power wash left when you get finished. So once you are happy with the detailing, I will put another layer of epoxy on and then we will apply our water slide. And this was when I added my opal vinyl leopard spots. I just liked that look a lot better than just the plain power, um, power wash leopard spots because it wasn't as pronounced as I wanted it to be. So I just wet the back of my water slide image and then we are going to wet our tumbler. You always want to make sure that your tumbler is wet because that is how we are able to move the water slide around on our tumbler and position it to where we want. So with water slide, you know it's ready when the backing detaches and then you just slide it onto your tumbler. And once you apply it, I will just take a microfiber cloth and just gently squeeze out any of the water that is underneath the water slide. You definitely want to get all the water out um, just so no weird air bubbles form. And you definitely don't want to epoxy it when there is water still underneath the water slide. And I will let my water slide dry for about an hour. Some people prefer to wait overnight, which is totally fine. Um, as long as the water slide is dry, you can go ahead and epoxy. So once my water slide is dry, I will put it back on my turner for the final layer or two of epoxy. 
And that is all. I hope you guys really enjoyed this tutorial. I thought it was so fun. And when I posted this cup in my group, everyone loved it. I think it's perfect for summer with all the bright colors. And I hope you guys took something from this and are able to create an awesome tumbler. And if you do, please post it in my tutorial group because I love to see your creations. If you enjoyed this tutorial or learned something new, please be sure to like, subscribe, and share. Don't forget to catch the next video coming up that was picked just for you. As always, if you're looking for more tips, tricks, or tutorials, be sure to check out my tutorial group on Facebook, which is linked in the description. 